Hello YouTube. I'm back again with another video and today I'm out in the workshop looking at my RC vehicles and I got some parts here. I have two of these Traxxas glow plugs. Got them cheap on eBay. Now uh, it's for the Revo. Well, one of these days I'll get the video out, put one in, and run in video. But so far, so good. Uh, the exhaust is holding up pretty nice with that spring kit right there. But yeah. Yeah, I figured I'll make this quick video. And now on the big boy here. I was I'm thinking about running this today I gotta take it to a, like a park a couple miles up the road about 15 minutes away I like to take this and run it today oh, yeah then pretty soon winter's around the corner and I will not run this in the winter time just because I, it's too cold for me personally I just I just hate the winter and I'd rather be in the hot, drippy summer than the cold ass winter. And yes, yeah, she's still dirty. I have not yet cleaned it because I want to do some more running. The final cleaning would be when I store it. And I have double thoughts here of how, where to store this. Because in my inside my workshop here, it gets pretty cold. There, it's not insulated. You can see cracks through the walls outside, you know, the sunlight coming in. So, I don't want this outside. I want it in my computer room. <sighs> but for right now, I'll wait till that point when the snow flies to take it in the house. But it will be spotless by then. So, another thing I wanted to do today was I want to take this and take a good look at what I'm going to be needing to replace. And one thing I did find on here was let me move the stand. See, that is so awesome. I'm so glad I built the stand. Now, if you look right under here, this one right here keeps turning, it does not tighten. And this one is tight. I mean, that is tight right there. So it looks like I need a bulkhead replacement on this side here. But if I do, I'm going to do the pair. And that's the rear. And now, when you turn this over to here, and when I do the front, one of them on this side, that one's the tight one, and this one's the loose side. Look, I can keep on turning. It's kind of weird on opposite sides, one of each. Well, it's probably no big deal. I mean, it's tight enough, I guess, but I would like to have that done right. So I'm going to look up the part numbers and get everything I need and uh, order it. And I'm not going to put it on until the final cleanup. And I'll replace the parts then, and I will make a very long video on that. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do now. Is I, uh, when you get one of these, it comes with a big manual. And what I did was I scanned the pictures of the schematic on this thing into the computer. And then I can just leave the book alone instead of keep opening up the book just to go to that page. So what I did is I scanned the pages that I needed. As you can see right here. You know, it gives you, it gives you everything you need. So it's easier just have the pieces of paper out. And it gives you the part numbers and everything. And I highly recommend if you have a scanner for your computer scan the books and then have the files 
and then you can print out a page that you want and you can write on it you know or enlarge it so you can see how things go together now I did that with my Traxxas team axes that I've built back in the past and it's a very very handy thing so right now what we're going to do is we're going to find we are going to find uh, the ball kids here and right here here's the front oh that's the motor here's front and back this is the back and this is the front and I got a plane going by my house um right here is the ball kid right there it looks like it's the low C251016 is for the rear those two I'll have to replace and I'm glad that they have a part number it looks like it does come in pairs so that's great I figure it would now when we, that's for the rear now here's for the front and if you look real closely see if I can get a good close up here it's the same number part number so they're identical pieces so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if it comes all together in one package you know front and rear and if so I'm just going to order it and now here's the diff case I don't know if I should replace those or not I don't think it needs it but I, I can't get to the screws to find out if they're stripped or, or not and and the reason why I'm doing this because it was a used vehicle and I just want everything right everything still works great but I want everything in tip-top shape because I already I already bought the boots which are $25 or something like that and I bought those so those are going to be going on so yeah the, the purpose of this video is to show you how I look up parts and pieces for my RC's you know you scan the book in in the scanner and then you have them on a computer as a picture file like a JPEG or something and then you can print them out then one FYI thing I want to tell you if you do print them out and if you use Windows 10's picture viewer make sure when you print fit the page don't fill the page fit the page and the reason for that is is when you fill the page a lot of this is going to get cut off I don't know why it does that but it does I mean I even scanned it as 8 by 11 or whatever the hell this normal sheet of paper is okay so yeah so that's what I'm going to do I'm just looks like I'm just going to order the bulkheads right here I think that would be alright so what I'll do today is I'll get those ordered and stuff yeah it was just kind of interesting seeing the screws were stripped and then I thought about getting some shims or something for this there's a lot of play right here I guess you can get a shim kit for it but yeah I thought I might I don't know yet yeah hopefully today I will get everything rocking and rolling and I like to get this running today and like I said it needs charged up I might as well do that now since it's here I love having this wire right here up there how I wired it in so you don't have to keep taking the body off taking the battery out so so we'll get this charger going Oh, one nice thing about how I built this garage is uh, everything is built the way I need the way I need it so we'll figure this out here plug this into here I built this cord like this 
So now I can just plug it in like so, and bam, there it is. Cord, one amp, all the way to there. So now she's charging the battery up. I have the uh, the Fly Sky remote or radio charged up. Charged that last night. Yeah, and that's about it. Yeah, maybe I'll use the temp gun. See what the temperature is right now. Record that. 60 degrees. It is a cold engine. Let's see if this this Revo engine is. Oh, it's 61 degrees. It's hotter. Oh, another thing I wanted to tell you. I ordered. This is kind of strange. I ordered another one of these Fly Sky. Uh, oh, what's it called? The FSIA 4B four-channel receiver. And the reason for that is, I found one for five dollars and sixty-eight cents, brand new. And yes, it's from China. I hate ordering from China. I got screwed twice <laughs> from China. Oh, that's another video. I'll explain that one later on if I remember. But I found it for five dollars and sixty-eight cents, brand new. It came from China, so it's probably mass-produced like crazy. Says it's new, last one left, and all that good stuff. So I ordered it just to have on hand because I'm still thinking about building a T Max. Still thinking about it. But uh, money's a little tight right now. You know, with every a lot of things going on in my personal life, you know, and and uh yeah it's, it's kind of tough trying to pay off bills you know how it is everybody but yeah that's why i haven't been making videos i've been doing a lot of work around the house just getting preparing for the winter time which everybody hates i know i hate it with a passion but i gotta yeah this is easier to store than the big boy I already got a place on the door in my computer room, and I got a place for this in my computer room also on the door. But I'm a little worried about putting it on that door for a couple reasons. One, my grandson loves opening and closing my door and playing with the door handle. He slams it open, slams it closed, and everything else, and it drives me nuts. But I think with the weight of this car, 30-some pounds... And the weight of this car, what, 10 pounds maybe? You know, there's an extra 40 pounds on that door. And maybe he'll struggle a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, that's... And I'm worried about... I don't know if you guys ever stored this... Let me know in the comments section down below. Is it okay to store this... If I turn it up on my door and mount it to the door like that, is all the oil going to run? Is one of my questions. Is the oil going to run out of the crankcase or if there whatever, if there's any extra oil or whatever laying in there? It probably won't come out the pipe because of all the twist. Well, it might, but we never know. And I know the gas tank will be completely emptied. So I don't have to worry about the fuel running out. But it should be alright. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts about putting this on the door, you know, in an angle upright. Because I don't want to leave it on a stand during the winter. Like I said, I don't want to take the stand in my computer room because I don't have much room in my computer room for starters. If I had a larger computer room slash man cave, oh, that'd be a different story. I have a whole section then. But yeah, I hope this video helped people about about these about printing out your manual, and you can enlarge it if you want to do whatever you want so you can see it. You know, I've owned computers. Whew, Probably about for 32 years now I had a computer. Now that's going to date me pretty good here. 
That's why my name on YouTube is uh, some guy over 40, because I'm well over 40. According to the wife, I don't act it. But that's okay. You act the way you feel, I guess. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. And I hope my channel keeps growing. It's growing slowly, which it's fine with me. I mean, and this is the hobbies that I like to do. I just like to share it with people and hopefully give them knowledge too. I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I've been down the road quite a few times. But the fifth scale, I'm new at. And that's why I'm hoping that you guys would help me out, which quite a few have, about pieces and parts and what to do and the motor. You know, especially Randy over his channel, the Nitro Revolution RC. He really helped me out when I sent that motor down to him. Uh, you guys remember that in the previous, oh, quite a few videos ago. He helped me out tremendously, and I really appreciate it because I was giving up. When I get to the giving up stage, it's like, screw it, sell it, get rid of it. You know, well. He helped me out, so I still got it. Because I did everything I possibly could to my knowledge of, about that motor. That's my first two-stroke motor I've ever torn apart and put together. But if it was a vehicle like my car, I could do motors like that on a bigger scale. You know, the older style vehicles like, you know, the V8 motors, Chevys. Yes, I was a Chevy man back in the day. Okay, well, that's it. I just want to get this video out real quick. And uh, oh, I've been rambling on now for 17 minutes. But yeah, hopefully this video turned out. I just want to show you guys the papers that I printed out and how I look up parts and hopefully someone thinks that's a good idea and it helps them out so okay guys thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again real soon